Hi Hanover students and hi to my Laura Meadow fifth graders. My name is Kristen Hazelwood and I'm here to share with you today a quick idea that you could do at home to do some of that spring cleaning and organizing that I know I'm in the mood for right now and at the same time do some learning. I am in my family's playroom where you can see we keep all of our books but they are not organized at all. They're kind of just thrown on the shelf. So what you could work on is organizing your home's library. And you can do that in lots of different ways. So we're gonna take a look at that. I pulled some books off the shelf and I'm gonna start seeing if I can organize them into different groups. So one way, and this would work if you were in kindergarten or first or second grade, if you like a particular series. So for example, I took all of our Pinkalicious books that go in that same series. A series is usually written by the same author and it usually follows like a similar character through each book. So I put all of those books together. You could organize your books that way. Another way you could organize your books is by the topic of the book. So that means what the book talks about, what the book is mostly about. So I put some books together that talk about vehicles. So I have trucks and airplanes and a digger. Those all have a similar topic. So you could put books like those together. I also um, could take my books and organize them by theme. The theme is a message or a lesson that the author wants us to take from the story. So after reading both of these books, The Kissing Hand and Clifford's Family, I realized that both of them are kind of meant to help me learn about loving your family. So I put those together based on the similar themes that they have. Another thing that you could start to do with your books is to organize them into the two big categories, fiction and nonfiction. So if I look at a few of the books that I have, I know that Trucks is a nonfiction book because if I open up the book Trucks, I can see it gives me things like photographs and labels and captions to give me information and facts all about Trucks. So I could put my nonfiction books all together. I know that this Amazing Airplanes book is nonfiction because it gives me facts and information all about airplanes. You can see in the back here, there's a nice diagram that explains all the different parts of the airplane. So it's teaching me facts about planes. So that's also nonfiction. Whereas some of these other books tell a made up story. It has characters that are in a certain setting and there's a story about them. So those are called fiction books. So I could put my fiction books together. So I could put Clifford's Family, If You Give a Pig a Pancake. These are all fiction books. Drop It Rocket is a fiction book. I could put all of those together. So I could sort by fiction, which means made up stories, versus nonfiction, which means true facts and real information for me to learn. Another way you could sort your books is by author. Remember, the author is the person who wrote the book. So sometimes it's good to take our books that are all by the same author and put those together. So I found two books, The Foolish Tortoise and Ten Little Rubber Ducks that are by Eric Carle, and he writes lots of good books. So I could put all of his books together. Now, for my grades three, four, and five friends, you all start learning about subgenres of fiction and nonfiction. So like we discussed before, we know that nonfiction are real facts and information about a topic, whereas fiction um, is a made up story. So we're going to look at how as an older elementary school student, you could even further organize your library by subgenre. So first of all, I took all of my nonfiction books and I'm putting them together. So you can see that this could be true facts and information about animals or a topic like the American Revolution, or it could even be like a how-to book. Like this one is a Mo Willems book telling you how to draw his characters, or a joke book tells you how to make people laugh. So all of those are nonfiction. I don't have any here at home, but you could also include any biographies or autobiographies, which are uh, true facts and information all about a person's life. You could include those in your nonfiction category. 
Now, we know that fiction can be divided into many different subgenres, so I'll show you how I did mine. So, first of all, I took my books that are fantasy and put them together. So, fantasy um, has elements that cannot happen in real life. So, for example, animals that behave like humans and they talk. I know that that's fantasy because it's impossible to happen in real life. I put all of those together. Another one I could add in here is a book like Harry Potter because although it would be really cool, I know that wizards aren't real, that you can't really fly on a broomstick or cast spells with a wand. So I put all of those in the subgenre of fiction that we call fantasy. Um, over here, I took books that are realistic fiction and put them together. So realistic fiction are stories that could happen in real life. Everything that happens in them could definitely happen in real life, but they are still made up stories, even though they are realistic. So I put these three books together because all of those things could really happen. They're, they're stories based on things that could really happen. Now, this is one of my favorite genres, but I don't have many kid books at my house in this genre. So this is called historical fiction. Historical fiction are made up stories, usually with a made up main character, but the main character is involved in a real time period in history. So there are real historical events, maybe even real people from history that pop up in the story, even though the main character is made up and some of the things the main character does and experiences may be made up. So that's historical fiction, another subgenre of fiction. Um, let's see here, I've got all my books laid out here. So over here, another subgenre of fiction is mystery. So a mystery means there's something unknown in the story that is trying to be solved by the end of the story. So an A to Z mysteries or like a case where a detective is trying to solve something or the boxcar children, those are all really good examples of mysteries. So I put all of my mysteries together as another subgenre of fiction. And then over here, these books are humor. So humorous books are just meant to be funny. They're made up fiction books that are just made to be funny. So the Black Lagoon series, a lot of Mo Willems books like Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus, these are just meant to be funny books. So I put all of those books together um, as humorous books. So that's another subgenre of fiction. And something else for my younger and older readers um, I know graphic novels is a very popular format that has come out that's almost, you know, becoming a genre in itself. So I also put together, these are all graphic novels, meaning they're kind of written almost to look like comic books. So I put those together in a category as well. I hope you've gotten some good ideas today about how you can organize your books at home. Uh, books you've read, you should be able to make a decision on where you want to put that on the shelf based on some of the things we talked about today. If it's a book that's on your shelf but you haven't read it, take a look at the cover, read the title, take a look at the back, and flip through the inside to see if you can decide which genre or which category you'd like to put it in. Most importantly, make sure you're reading every day. That's the most important thing you can do. Stay healthy, stay safe, and take care.